I'm actually kind of nervous. How come? Because it feels like now it's out in the world. We've been so secretive about this for so long. Back. Yeah, exactly. That's it now. That's my baby's flown the nest. And I'm Michael. And we're Cat's Dog Photography. Today we're presenting to you our scarf project. Um, we've been working on this over the course of the last 18 months. The scarf project began in September in 2021. We were shooting our Christmas photo. Yeah, I know that's planning ahead. But we went down to the beach uh, with our two dogs, Poppy and Lily. And we'd, we'd only just got Lily a month before in the August. So we'd wrapped up this little box with Christmas wrapping paper. And we lit this with two kind of like stick lights. And at the end of the shoot, I was taking the ribbon off Lily. Yeah, Michael pulled it out to my camera. And we looked at each of them and we were like, oh my God, there's something really special here. Because even just static with it being white, it almost looked like it was blowing in the wind. And it kind of reminded me of when you see wedding veil pictures where like the wedding veil's kind of blowing in the wind towards the camera. We wanted a really special project that we could work on. Something that was unique to us and something that represented us. Should we have a little have look? A look at it. I think the first one that we should show is this one. I think this is actually the most epic photograph that we've ever taken. I think so. It was a dream location of, of ours anyway. Like I've wanted to shoot there for a long time and it kind of all came together. We, uh, we got booked to go to Northern Ireland. It was actually a separate shoot to this one. And then Cody is a movie trained dog. He wasn't on a lead there. Most of the dogs we shoot are actually on their yeah. leads and they're being held. That photo took us 40 minutes, or was 40, it 50 minutes. I think Just it was nearly an hour. That, yeah, I think it was, yeah. And it was quite challenging. I found that one quite hard because getting the perspective right, because I was shooting on a wide angle lens and you've got all those hexagonal shapes that Because you wanted to get so much into the image. Like you can't see it in this picture, but there is like almost like a tower of more of those pillars right behind where the scarf is and they're being covered by the scarf. I know, so, and I really wanted that, So it? to start with, <laughs> you're a little bit disappointed with it, but I think it still shows off the landscape and having the green in this island behind, like the little bits of green and, and like the plants, like all, all the shots that I think that we really like, the scarf looks natural in that environment. Yeah, it needs to be well matched, doesn't it? Yeah. As I was moving the camera as well, I, I was aware that oh, I might need to, because I think Michael was actually stood in front with the light, and I'm super aware that I need a reference photo, so I have to take a picture when he's not in the scene, just of the scene as it is. And if I'm- How was the scarf thrown for this one, if I was holding the you, light? I think you threw it. I think you were stood here. And I threw the scarf. So these, what are they called? Stalic. Bass. Basalt, basalt rocks. They are caused by cooling of the earth and cause these hexagonal shapes which can come up out of the earth. And these, interestingly, these shapes can also be found in Scotland, on the coast opposite here in Northern Ireland, and then also in Iceland. So I think that's when all those bits of coastline were joined together. That was all part of one. Yeah, you see a lot of them in, in Iceland. Basalt, basalt columns. columns. Yeah. We did have a good wind on that day. It was really windy, wasn't it? The direction of the wind is so important. Like we try and do some shots and because of the direction of the light in the scene that we want, the dogs have to be standing in a particular direction and then the wind's just blowing in like the totally opposite direction to where you want, want it to blow. So if you've got no wind at all, it can be difficult to throw it in to make it look organic. <laughs> Definitely could have done with an extra arm. <laughs> yes. So what I quite like about this project anyway is that like you could never re replicate that shot again yeah. because like there's just something about the chaos of the way the wind's moving that you've captured. What's the one that's different to that? Like a very different one. Because like, this wasn't particularly windy, if windy at all. No, yeah. It's, it's literally just the scarf falling to the ground, isn't it? You were such a nice dog. It was, wasn't even gorgeous. Buster, Buster. Makes me think of Buster Rhymes. And I love you. Oh no, that's Nelly. <laughs> <laughs> You're yeah. throwing it behind him, aren't you? There is still a subtle breeze. Like it kind of helps just hold the fabric so it doesn't fall too quickly. Timing wise, we had to have, Michael was throwing the scarf. I then had the ball, so I had to you, squeak it as Michael let go of yeah. the scarf at the right time. So the buster then looked interested, like ears up down at me. And then as soon as I got the shot, then I had throw to throw the ball. the ball for him so that he's going to get rewarded. Because otherwise, if we didn't pay him, he's not going to want to keep doing it. One of the hard challenges with these shots is to make the, the keep the dog's attention when the scarf's moving around, because they want to look at the scarf. <laughs> he looks like he's in my butt there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This was December in 2022, and I'd never seen snow on the beach before. I've never seen frozen sea. Not this much. I mean, Have you seen snow on the beach before? It wasn't even snow. I mean, snow on this, the beach. Yeah, this wasn't You've even snow. It, it, was, it was just um, the frozen water, but then... But that's sea, that doesn't mean it's seawater that's yeah. frozen. This was kind of like a little dip. Um, 
where well, obviously that was the seawater that had kind of been left. Yeah, in. this was going to flood first. And the sea was coming around, around and us. we were like looking behind us, like, oh, we're going to get wet. <laughs> I think the like the really bright white, like the burnt out white, that wouldn't usually work, but it works really well on this shot. Mm. Like it's positioning in the way it's framed in the scarf, and the fact that he's white and that you've got the white snow. It works. And like, I think as there isn't well, too much contrast. If he was a black dog and the bright white was right next to like, him, yeah. there'd be too much contrast. I don't know, maybe it's the pink in his face. That kind of really matches him with the pink next to the, uh, mm. the sun there. Should I look at another one? This was one of my favourites. When I took this shot, I actually didn't intend for it to be wonky. I wanted it to be straight. I've had operations when I was a kid. My hearing's terrible. Basically, you got prosth prosthetic ears. Yeah, so um, I think there's something up with the bounce in my ears because oftentimes I'll look through my camera and it will look completely straight. And I'll look on the back of my camera and I'm like, that is so wonky because your ears affect your balance. Yeah. But then when we started analysing it, we were like, actually, it looks kind of cool. Like, why, why do you think that works? Because there's no straight lines in the image. It's that natural organic flow of the scarf kind of being like all over the place. I wouldn't necessarily, there's nothing straight. Like it's straight to his leg. It's straight through his shoulder. <laughs> You wouldn't, like if everything else was like super, super straight, it would feel a bit off, but because it's the scarf. The scarf allows you to do this. Because you've got that kind of sweeping shape. There's another another shot wonky intentionally. Which was that? Was that a scarf one? Good boy, Ollie. Oh, yeah. Like, I think one of my favorite things about this is, uh, I mean, different ways to use the fabric. So like the fact that the, the fabric isn't around the neck, it's not just being thrown behind. It's like weaving its way in and out through the image. This was taken at Wastwater. Wast water? It's spelled Wast. Wast water, but you meant to say Wast water. It was voted Britain's most beautiful view. That mountain in the background is Scarfell Pike, which is England's tallest mountain. Michael's holding the material out so that you get that swoop round, it's like enveloping him. And then he lets go and I take the shot at the opportune moment whilst it's let go and whilst the material's organically floating. Yeah, the flow's important. He was so good as well. Again, another off-lead dog. I mean, because most of the dogs we shoot are absolute wiggle bumps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> before we do this, we have to take a bunch of pictures beforehand. When we've just gone in and straight away done the scarf picture, I feel like they've been a lot harder. Yeah, the dogs and they've not been as successful enough. because yeah. they're not as used to us. It's almost like like we've shot them for a couple of hours. They're used to us. They're used to the light, and they're quite happy to then have this material flapping around them because it's kind of it's a weird thing for a dog to just go straight into. Yeah, yeah. it would be. What are the things that you like about this image? I really like that that flow of the scarf as it kind of wraps over, you know, it's just falling down over him and it's just covering his little ear as well, which I think is really nice. Oh, do you know what it reminds me of a little bit? The woman with the green eyes. Yeah, I know oh, the God, picture you're talking uh, about. Steve Mc... Shoot, what's he called? I know the picture you're talking about. I'm terrible with names. Like you're bad with faces and I'm bad with names. <laughs> and it almost reminds me of that with the scarf just kind of over his his head. And I like his posture as well. He's got a really nice posture. I did actually, <laughs> I had to darken his willy a little bit. <laughs> Because on, on the original shot, it was quite bright. <laughs> you don't want an eyeful. <laughs> One of my favorite things about this shot is the dappled light and the shadows. I feel like it really helps guide your eye around. Mm. Like usually you wouldn't want like shadows casting over everything like this. It breaks all the rules, this photo, doesn't it? But it works. It really works. I think this is an example of a material that perhaps was harder to work with. Do you know, I think he just doesn't show that well on camera. It actually edits up really well. Yeah. There's, there's something about whatever the fabric's made out of that it reflects the light and bounces it around everywhere. And, if, and it's quite difficult to light without flattening the, the fabric out. And This works so well as well because Jesse blends in with the colour. This was um, in a barn at Sizer Castle in the Lake District and it was quite dark. I think this was actually after the sun had gone down and we were in sun, darkness. Sun's totally down, yeah. I think this is purely lit by... Mm. A our... single small light. You struggle to do this on your old camera. Yeah, that's one thing I absolutely love about the Sony is its noise is so uniform and it, it handles low light situations so well. The vast majority of these shots were taken on my Sony a7R4, but we did shoot a couple of them on a Canon R6, which we were lent by Canon. Do you think we had a little bit of natural light seeping through there? You know, on the rafters or is that just coming off the... The ISO light. Yeah, you mean your ISO is at 2500, so... It's always better to push your ISO in camera than it is to lift it, lift after. it afterwards, yeah. There, there is you. a lot of pictures in here. How many pictures do you think we've got in this project? I mean, 
This isn't even all of them. As we've been doing it, we've been experimenting. And like we did some with action dogs to try and have it like flying out behind them, but it didn't really work because the scarf then became too small. There, there is one I really like, but they're too far away. I think the reason that one worked was because there's a reflection. And I present to you, good boy Ollie. His face there. It looks like a little chocolate in a chocolate wrapper. He does, doesn't he? The new face of quality sheet. <laughs> this is the only one in the whole scarf project where the scarf hasn't been let go yet. It's like, that's the moment before it was let go. It was quite windy, so it's still moving naturally. And there's a twist in it here as well, which normally the twist doesn't work. Mm. Like the twist prevents it from being able to flow naturally. Well, I like how the twist appears to flow into the image. So like the triangle of stones and then the triangle of the uh, the sea and like that they just kind of feel like a continuation of that twist and with like again with the wonk on the angle on, on the on the horizon with the horizon not being straight it makes ollie straight again it's like ollie's straight and the horizon's wonky but it just makes it feel more like it's part of that fabric twisting mm. and flowing naturally you stick to a rule until you really understand why some why the rules there in the first place yeah you can see the full video behind the scenes of when we did this scar photo with ollie i'll link the video and you can go ahead and watch that after you've seen this one this one a lot a lot of people said it's their favorite Daphne. and there's something about it that i really like i think it's the way the light falls Daphne, so beautiful isn't she a gorgeous dog i love her i absolutely love dalmatian i would definitely have a dalmatian if they were smaller <laughs> chihuahua size yeah this one reminds me of quality street you know yeah the, the, but it's purple yeah <laughs> and i think it's the like you the now. ribbons they use oh galaxy like what me yeah it's one of a few in here with a scarf actually around the neck We've done a mix, haven't we? Because we want to mm. get a different look. So this again was taken after sunset, so the light in the sky is its blue hour. It was dark. Super dark. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't, we were on the beach, so it, you, your eyes kind of adjust, don't they? But in terms of the light we were using, we had it on the lowest power. Oh, look at the beck in. Oh, oh, that would have been cute, wouldn't it? If we could get her like on her hind legs, like begging, looking out at the sky. You always want a million concepts going on in one, I do. one image. <laughs> This happened when we were doing Good Boy Ollie's scarf portrait. I was like, oh, he's famous for doing his beauty balance trick. So let's get him bowing down and then have the scarf wrapping around him. Doing the scarf is, is, is quite hard work, isn't it? It's quite taxing. Yeah. <laughs> and then you try and add in like tricks. We'll do it one day. We'll get a dog doing a trick and the scarf. You keep wanting like really busy scenes as well. Super busy mm. scenes and then also the scarf at the same time. Because that's what I really like in my portraiture. I absolutely love it when we have like a landscape that gives you a sense of place and yeah, but then sometimes that distracts from the scar. Michael's always vetoing me. <laughs> yeah, you can see how um, strong the wind is there, can't you? Yeah. Really, it's taking the scarf with some force. I think that was quite challenging as well, because just before we did this shot, we'd done a photo of her running through water, and I had my camera literally in the water pretty Drenched. much, just above it. So there was sand and water all over my lens. I, I trashed my camera for this shot. But I feel like it's so worth it. I think we found the ones that we, that we get know the best work results. well. Yeah. yeah, but I think we should start experimenting again. Yeah, I to do. start with, we were using a lot of different types of fabric. Some of them were quite stiff, weren't they? Like the pink one. I like the texture and stuff in it. I almost feel like the, the dapples in the fabric match the dapples in the, in the tree, trees. Yeah. There's the one of Poppy that we did in um, the Atom Panopticon. Yeah, we just used the little aperture lights. These are what I'm using to light my background with right now. They're quite low power for photography, really, but I used them to light up this Atom Panopticon because Poppy was so little. We could just put that little light behind her. I had a super high ISO for that, I think, didn't I? Yeah, ISO 5000 for that. And that was just a tiny little scarf. I like the concept. <laughs> I like the composition. Mm. It just needs to be better quality. Yeah, I agree. Now there you've got like a Moray effect going on. Yeah, the bottom. This makes me think of like Game of Thrones or something. Wow. Probably because it's around the corner from where it's all filmed. Oh shoot, yeah it is. <laughs> this was taken in Northern Ireland up in the Moor Mountains. Oh, and you remember that massive moon? Same size as the moon always is. No, it's not. It looks huge. Look at it. Look how massive it is. The moon always looks bigger closer to the horizon. It's an optical illusion. That looks bigger to me. Oh yeah, and I remember I kept looking at the moon and you're like, can't concentrate. Concentrate and be, but I'm doing this because he was flapping the scarf. Not, not flapping, just flapping <laughs> the scarf. ADHD brain. Flapping is a cat's job. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been really cool if we could have included that in the shot, but it would have just been like tiny little dot. It would have been a dot, yeah. yeah Whenever you try and shoot the moon, unless you've got like a 9,000 mil lens or something. <laughs> 9,000. <laughs> it's just 
it's gonna look tiny. <laughs> the thing I love about this is that little those those golden rays just coming rather than it being like a sun star, it's just like little almost like little mini god rays coming out. And imagery in general, I like like kind of fractal patterns and I like how those rays almost mimic the bands in the fabric. I think this is the only one in the project, the ones that we did up there that were shot natural light. Yeah, probably. All the others in the project, I think we've used flash, but this we just used a reflector to bounce the, the, sun, the sun back, back. into her face. Oh, river, river, river. This was taken the very day we got that scarf. It was down in Brighton. You can see the old pier just behind the scarf. Again, this was when I really wanted to have that as the feature. And then the blinking yeah, scarf I, just I gets want, in the way. I want, I want the pier and I want the scarf and I want a dog. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> But the scarf's the important thing. So there were shots where the pier was more visible, but we're not there to shoot the pier, we're there to shoot the scarf and the dock. So, you know, I still think you get a sense of place with it because you do have a little bit of it. Gives like, you more intrigue, out. like looking through the scarf. Yeah, you're right. And you can actually. just see little elements. We were walking down the lanes in Brighton, and Brighton, of course, is known for it. What is it? It's gay people. <laughs> <laughs> It's known for its gay community. And we were walking down the lanes, which are these really quirky streets that have like all really like cool independent shops. Just such a vibe. It was if closer. it was closer, we'd move there, yeah. Can't leave the north. Queen of the North! <laughs> Why is there so many Game of Thrones references in this? We saw this fabric hanging like a big roll of it and we just knew it was absolutely perfect. This is just so fitting having a rainbow scarf in, in the Ryan. UK's gay capital, yeah. Can you guess what kind of dog river is? If you can guess what this is put right now, comments. put in the comments. I want to try this fabric again in the dark. Is that one we shot in almost pitch black, where it's just black? Oh, yeah, of Molly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Our client actually ordered this in a big 30 by 40. See, we've done the scarf project as a personal project, and it really excites me when they order one of the scarf photos because it resonates with them as well. How long do you think we'll do this project for? I don't know. I mean, I don't have any plans of stopping it. I think it's a project that can just carry I'm on. Going, you that's can what just, I'm thinking. You can just keep adding new colours, adding new fabrics, and just kind of let it evolve. Yeah, well, imagine if we keep doing this for like five years and then... How many epic photos we'll have. Yeah. I like this one, how it's quite chill. Yeah. The scarf doesn't have to be like blowing in the wind so much. Yeah, it's just kind of running down the, the steps. The one of the Romanian rescue was like that as well, Cora. Cora, oh yeah, on yeah. the steps. She's very kind of chill and... Oh, she was just putting a paw through as well. Wants to another purple one because this is the same scarf, but used in a very different way. And it's the same location as the first photo that we're looking at of Cody. This is the, the tower of stones that was... Um cut out on the on the original. And this wasn't what I really wanted to create, which was something including the, the stones coming the up out of the earth, the basalt, there we Columns. go. So it's like, right, let's go back there again. Um, but of course, we'd already shot Cody, and I just put a shout out on socials. I was like, is anyone in Northern Ireland that could meet me with a dog tomorrow evening at sunset? And Keela was, she was only a few weeks old, wasn't she? She was so well behaved. Yeah. She's one of the best puppies. I would just pass the lead and she just, did pretty much whatever I wanted it to do. Even though this was just the day after the one that we took of Cody, it was just a completely different look, wasn't it? Because we had a, a golden sunset. Yeah, I was just thinking the oranges in this is like ties in perfectly with the orange in the sun. Oh, yeah, have you done anything with that or is that just a coincidence? I have changed the oranges slightly. To but match, it wasn't, it yeah, it wasn't actually intentional. I tend to make my yellows a little bit less Yellow. Blue, yeah. No, like more kind of on the orange side. Yeah. Do you know what's nice here as well? That we've got the purple in the scarf, kind of like a river, like snaking up towards and, her. And there's a little bit of pink in the clouds. Yeah. yeah. It almost like frames it again. That's serendipity again. Oh, this was an early one, of course. This might have been the strongest one we've had. I was worried that that was going to blow him off. Like, <laughs> like seriously, yeah. worried. not just joking. <laughs> like I actually thought he might just make a parachute and he was just going to disappear. <laughs> Oh god, it even looks epic on the behind the scenes, doesn't it? That light! Yeah, the shape of the rock and, and the shape of the V, like the way the scarf's frame and the rock is just perfect there. The way we had the flash placed here looks like that's almost Natural the light. sun. Yeah, that's how you want light to look. If you're injecting light into a picture, you don't want it to look... Too artificial. False, yeah. Mm, or forced. Yeah, you want your brain to think that it's real. Depending on the scenario, I mean, obviously, if you've got like pink and blue gel lights, then your brain knows that's not real. You're saying that, but like being in a club, like I know it's artificial light anyway, but if you light with like a single light source, it doesn't feel the same as having a whole club where you know there's loads of lights, and mm. you can still do that and make it feel authentic. It doesn't just feel like someone just stuck a small coloured light there. Molly, Molly, Molly! We did a really cute shot of her on this session with little booties on as well. She actually hiked all the way up to Malin Cove with the boots, boots on. So cute. 
It almost feels theatrical or something. Like it <gasps> kind of feels like it could be on a stage, like yeah. a curtain or something. I'm presenting Molly. She says theatrically. <laughs> <laughs> These are really special rocks as well. It's a limestone Mom pavement. Cove. Harry Potter was filmed up here, Deathly Hallows. And there is actually a really cool view behind, like it, you have these lime, this limestone pavement with all these rocks with little crevices in them, it stretches out, and then you've got a beautiful view over the Yorkshire Dale. And I really wanted to include that in it. But again, you know, if it came a little bit higher, then it was just getting too busy behind Molly for this particular shot with the scarf in there as well. So sometimes less is more, isn't it? It's being selective. I love how you mention Harry Potter but you don't even like Harry Potter. No, but I think it's cool that it was filmed there. No, I don't like it. I was she, just She like... doesn't. <laughs> she's she's pretending. <laughs> she doesn't like Harry Potter at all. Don't come for me. <laughs> Leave your disapproval in the comments. This is the only one we've done that's in an urban location, isn't it? Possibly. It was an early one as well, wasn't it? Mm. I, I want to go back. I want to, like, maybe even the same location again, because I really like the buildings there. And I like the uh, the contrast of like the very straight edge geometrical shapes that you can get in the buildings. Mm -hmm. Like this triangle for me is really making it. And like, again, the straight lines coming down. These were all shot when we had the R6 on loan. That's my favorite on the Canon. And this was another one where I wanted something in the background, which was the Ribblehead Viaduct. You can see a tiny little bit just behind a butt. One more image. Last one. This is one of my favourites. It's like saying, you're my favourite child, you're my second favourite child. <laughs> no, but this is one of my favourites. Do you have a favourite dog? No! God, no! I don't understand how anyone could ever do that. We have clients with favourite dogs. And favourite children. Yeah. <laughs> you can't say that though, can you? <laughs> the dogs don't know, they don't care. <laughs> children probably don't know either. They don't know either. Pixie was ill. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and so it was kind of touch and go. Her mum didn't know how long she had left. And it was a little bit of a, like a heart wrench. So we'd actually brought this session forward serendipitously. Again, serendipity. On the day, it was snowing. It's husky and snow, which is perfect, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. And I think we'd picked this colour already for that shoot. Yeah. And then she also really liked the colour. It was one of her favourite colours. That works really well with the very cool tones, like the shadow. It's yeah. almost like you'd paint it. Oh, it's like the... Um... Starry Night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chaos, isn't it? Like, there are patterns in chaos. This project's actually been really well-timed. The launch has coincided with our 10 year anniversary. I initially set Cat's dog up in 2013. So it's literally just over a year, uh, just over a year, just over 10 <laughs> just years. Right. We're gonna do a launch, an official in-person gallery launch. Let us know in the comments actually if you would like us to do a video about the gallery. And in the meantime, go check out the Ollie shoot. Yeah, if you want some more scarf goodness, Ollie's video is the one you wanna watch next. Love you all, bye.